today on Growth Shares, let's analyze and see whether Wells Fargo is a great long-term investment. This analysis is divided into three broad factors, the business, the investment, and the valuation. Furthermore, these three factors are subdivided into 14 metrics that, in part, tell the whole story of the company. Each factor and each metric are given different weight, together adding up to 100% of the overall analysis. Each factor and each metric are then given a score from 0 to 10, with 0 being the worst, 5 being average, and 10 being the best, when compared to other public companies. The final score will also be given a score from 0 to 10. This analysis takes into account the long-term view of the company, not day-to-day, -day, not even month-to-month, -month, but years. Let's first look at the company as a business. Taken exclusively, we analyze the company as a business. How the company makes money, is it making its money efficiently, and is it growing its business? All those things are what we look for to determine whether the company is actually a good business to own. It doesn't matter if you're looking to buy one share or the whole company. We should see first if the company is even worth analyzing further. As Warren Buffett once said, it's far better to buy a wonderful company at a fair price than a fair company at a wonderful price. That's why the largest weight is given to the business factor. There are eight metrics that measure the business, and we'll dive into them right now. Let's look at the company's forward growth. Forward growth is a percentage based on how much the company is growing its earnings while factoring recent performance with a conservative projection of future growth. The higher the growth, the more potential the business has. Wells Fargo has a growth rate of 15.26%, giving us a score of 7. Next, let's look at the company's business margins. Business margins are a percentage based on whether the company is using its available resources in an effective way to maximize its growth and sustainability in terms of ongoing activity. The higher the margins, the more effective the business. Wells Fargo has margins of 67.3%, which means a score of 10. Let's then look at the company's operating margins. Operating margins are a ratio based on various price ratios to determine whether the company is using its available resources efficiently in proportion to its recent trending stock price. The lower the ratio, the more efficient the business. Wells Fargo has operations of 14, which means a score of 4. Next, let's look at the company's rate of return. Rate of return is a percentage based on how the company is using invested and reinvested capital in a positive way to promote present and future growth. The higher the percentage, the better the business is dealing with its investments. Wells Fargo has returns of 7.17%, which means a score of 4. Let's look at the company's debt utilization. Debt utilization is a ratio based off on how much the company's growth and business activity is fueled by borrowed money, short-term and long-term debt. Too much debt is often a sign of artificial growth, indicating an underutilized business. The lower the ratio, the less debt is being used to grow the business. Wells Fargo has a utilization of 0.1, which means a score of 4. Next, let's look at the company's dividend. Dividend is a percentage based on the yield a company pays out to signify its stability phase in its life cycle as a way to reward long-term shareholders. A low dividend can often signify a company in its growth stage, which usually means it's in its speculative phase. The higher the percentage, the more money you'll be paid as an owner. Wells Fargo pays a 2.61% dividend, which gives us a score of 9. Let's look at the company's sustainability. Sustainability is a ratio based off a company's ESG risk rating to measure its environmental, social, and governance impact, which often accounts its management responsibility to shareholders, employees, and society. The lower the ratio, the more the business has a positive impact to society. Wells Fargo has an ESG risk rating of 32.8, which means a score of 2. Lastly, let's look at the company's market dominance. Market dominance is a metric that takes into account its market share, its ability to stay ahead of the competition, and how well it continually grows. It's basically how close is the company to a monopoly. The more dominant, the stronger the business fares against its competitors. Wells Fargo has secondary market dominance, which means a score of 8. When we add up all 8 business metrics together, we get a score of 5.54. Next, let's look at the company as an investment. Taken exclusively, we look at the company solely as an investment, and how its numbers, opinions on the stock, and what investors and traders are doing with the stock. Instead of looking at the business aspect of the company, we're analyzing it simply as a stock flashing on our screens with its share price and important ratios. A company can be a great business, but it also has to be attractive enough as an investment to warrant even putting money into. Although a vital factor in our analysis, the smallest weight is given to the investment factor. There are five metrics that measure the investments, and we'll dive into them right now. First, let's look at the company's stock performance. Stock performance is a ratio based on a combination of how the company's stock has performed in comparison to its industry, its sector, and the overall market over a three-month, one-year, and five-year period. The higher the ratio, the stronger the stock price is to its competitors. 
Wells Fargo has a performance ratio of negative 2.1, which means a score of zero. Next, let's look at a company's technical analysis. Technical analysis is a percentage based on a combination of various simple moving averages and RSI to determine how mostly short-term traders are analyzing the company. The higher the percentage, the more favorably traders are looking at the company. Wells Fargo has a range of negative 4.2%, giving us a score of three. Let's then look at the company's short interest. Short interest is a percentage of traders and investors who are actively betting on the company's stock going down, which reveals a negative opinion and forecast the company as an investment. The lower the percentage, the more bullish traders and investors think of the stock. Wells Fargo has a short interest of 0.84%, which gives us a score of nine. Next, let's look at the company's Wall Street analysis. Wall Street analysis is a percentage based on what other analysts see in the company. Other opinions are important because they sway investor sentiment, where a consensus either way can determine a stock short-term and long-term performance. The higher the percentage, the more favorably analysts see the company as an investment. Wells Fargo has a consensus of 38%, giving us a score of three. Lastly, let's look at the company's institutional ownership. Institutional ownership is a percentage based on how much of the company's available shares are owned by investment firms, various funds, and other large players. Being backed by major institutions, a company shows stability for smaller investors to feel safe knowing they're not the only players. The higher the percentage, the safer you can feel as an investor. Wells Fargo has an ownership of 73.6%, which gives us a score of 9. When we add up all five investment metrics together, we get a score of 4.64. Finally, let's look at the company's valuation. Valuation is what most investors look at when deciding whether to invest in a company or not. It's putting everything together to figure out the price at which we would be willing to buy the company's stock. A company can be a great business and also an attractive investment, but the stock needs to be fairly valued or better to even make it a worthwhile addition to your portfolio. A large share, 33% of the analysis depends on the company's valuation. There is only one metric that measures the company's valuation, and we'll dive into that right now. Let's look at the company's fair value price. Fair value price is the most you should pay for the company's stock based on a conservative projection of future cash flow put into a discounted cash flow model, which is handicapped to give a conservative number as a way to increase its margin of safety. Wells Fargo has a fair value price of $52.58 per share, which I consider to be undervalued, which means a score of 8. As a recap, here are the scores for all 14 metrics. Finally, we'll add the three factors to get our final score. Based on my complete analysis of Wells Fargo, I give a final score of 6.15, which makes it above average long-term investment. My final score doesn't necessarily mean I'm bullish or bearish on the company's stock. Major news such as earnings or economic data may change some or all of these metrics, but my analysis is built upon a solid foundation that focuses on the long-term health of the company. And as such, my analysis takes into account a company regardless of industry, sector, or location of business. So you've made it this far. Shoot me an email. I'd love to get in touch with you and talk more. If you want to see me analyze more companies, hit that like button, subscribe to my channel, and share this video with other investors. And as always, take care of your money.